The font study that we're doing today we started a couple years ago. Uh, sportsmen had expressed concern over fawn predation. Uh, a lot of news stories coming out of the southeastern part of the United States uh, involving coyote predation on white-tailed deer. Uh, we've seen populations of predators uh, expanding in Pennsylvania in the last decade and a half uh, since we've done the last fawn study. So that interest uh, was what initiated the, the project and we're here now uh, into the second year of a fawn study looking at fawn predation uh, in forested habitats. We have two study areas. In the northern study area, we have uh, five uh, bio-aids that we've hired specifically to look for fawns, and then we have a sixth person that is a, uh, a crew leader. In the southern study area, we have we hired four people, and a fifth one is a, is a crew leader. Most of the births are gonna take place between May 24th to June 7th. So that's our best window of opportunity. In the southern study area, the thing that we'll have them do is to search agricultural fields, uh, just places where the fawns would have been born. We'll go in and search those fields just by foot, covering as much area as we can, and try to find them before they can outrun us. And then we're able to walk in, pick the fawn up, and begin processing it. Blindfolding an animal starts to take away some of the apprehension, the stress levels. The fawn starts to calm down. So we'll put a blindfold on, We'll weigh the animal in a bag. Then we'll put uh, ear tags on. And then we'll put a small transmitter on. And that small transmitter is it's a, a, a collar that has elastic on the belting. Uh, the stitching on one of the loops will break down and release, making it a little bit bigger. A little bit later, there'll be another loop that breaks loose and makes it a little bit bigger. So we'll be able to keep a lot of these collars on up through, at least through a six months of life, through the end of the intensive period when we wanna monitor the survival of these animals. After we're done processing the fawn, uh, we then wanna put the fawn back in its, the same bed that we found it or as close as we can. So we'll take the fawn back, try to tuck its legs underneath it, get it to bed down, and then we will leave very quickly. If the fawn does get up and leave, we just leave the fawn go at that point and the mother comes back and reunites with them.